Hello, welcome to another episode of History Hunters. I'm here outside of Oakdale, California. Actually, specifically, I'm west of Valley Home. I grew up not far from here, about two and a half miles from here. On the weekend, my brothers and I, and I, my friends, would go down to the Ben Acres store and get a lot of candy. But there's some stories I didn't know about this cemetery, the Valley Home Cemetery on Lone Tree Road. I went to school on Lee Avenue. It was Fair Oaks Elementary School. And across the street, in 1959, there was a tragedy that I didn't even know about till this year. And my research turned up this weird story about a out of control jet that crashed into this guy's house and took his life. He's buried here. And also found out there's another very interesting story that I'll tell you about a man buried in his car. So this is the old Ben Acre store that my brother and my friends would ride bicycles to about two and a half miles from our house. Every weekend, it seemed like we would come down here and buy candy. I mean, a dollar could buy you a boatload of candy, but man, you talk about some great memories here. Can't believe our parents let us ride that far on bicycles out in the country. But again, it was a different era. There's not a lot to Valley Home. Uh, there's a church here, St. John's Lutheran Church. I remember bicycling by this in the 70s. So it's been here probably 90, 100 years, I would guess. This town used to be called Fellheim. Took me a while to find the grave that I'm gonna be looking for. Kyle Anderson. He was a post office employee and uh, he was fixing to retire. He was 68 years old. On the afternoon after work, August 12, 1959, he was minding his own business, sitting down to eat. His wife and daughter were in the house. Some of his grandchildren were in the house. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, comes a piece of a jet. The wheel assembly crashed right into this man's kitchen, taking his life immediately. Kyle Anderson, 1890 to 1959. What a way to go, huh? It was the end of the work day. He was sitting at the kitchen table, getting ready to eat. A little did he know that there was an Air Force pilot on his way in a military jet from McClellan Air Force Base, northeast of Sacramento flying to Phoenix, Arizona. And about 15 minutes out, he was having problems with his hydraulic controls, so he turned back and radioed Mayday. Within minutes, Lieutenant Patrick Swanson had no control of the airplane and fired the button on his ejection seat at 18,000 feet. And I'm sure he was praying that his aircraft would not hit anything or anybody on the ground. It was basically a rural area, a little bit between Jamestown, mostly in the Keystone area is where this happened. Fortunately, the jet just careened out of control and made its way circling towards Oakdale, California. Despite our efforts to locate a photo of Kyle Anderson, we were not successful even after contacting surviving family members. Right here, as you can see, is the grave of Esther Anderson, and she lived another 22 years after the death of her husband. Very traumatic thing that she went through. Holding a bottle of champagne, all his jewelry was with him, everything he wanted to take, everything like that with him. He... While at the cemetery, a groundskeeper told me of a crazy story about a man who made arrangements to be sitting in the back seat of his limousine with drinks in his hand and be buried that way. Did he buy all these spaces? Yeah, he, he yeah, for the, for the car to be put in. Nine, nine burial plots for him, huh? Yep. That is trippy. Huh. He's in the back of his limo like this. It's in the back of the limo like that? Yep, just like that. <laughs> crazy. Wait, did you see it? Oh, uh, yeah. Back, yeah, way back when, yeah, when it happened. I was just in and, in and out. I was really paying attention to it. But yeah, that's what they did. They put him in here, right here. So, Gosh. I was like, sis, are you serious? She goes, she goes, well, let me talk to the, the county and see how that goes and see what I have to do in order to that's crazy. You know, make it happen, you know? 
they told her everything what she had to do to get rid of it. You know, all the tires and no, no fluids, no, none of that stuff that could contaminate the What car. year was the, the uh, car? Uh, I'm not even too sure. I can't remember if it was, but it was a, it was a limo. And they never did a story on it, huh? No, I don't think so. And this is him? Yeah, I believe that's him. Apparently, this Brett Clay Staples uh, wanted to be buried in his car. And he bought nine spaces here. Uh, right here where you see this void where no markers are. He's buried down there in his car. And uh, the county had to prove it. They, you know, made sure that the engine was drained of all its fluids so it wouldn't drain into the ground and become an environmental hazard. But apparently his wife is not dead. Apparently, I mean, you see, he was born in 1960, which is six months before I was born. And uh, apparently his wife's remarried, but there's a picture of him right there. Really bizarre story. I mean, I've heard, heard of stories where people are buried in their car, but you generally don't see them happen here in this part of the country. I'm not aware that any newspapers did a story on this as well. So, very interesting. Okay, so now let's go to Oakdale. I'll show you where the crash occurred at Lee and Pontiac Streets. Just down the street is Fair Oaks School where I went to school in the 70s. I didn't know anything about it growing up in the 70s. Just recently found out about it this year and was really intrigued. I found articles online, Oakdale Leader and the Modesto B covered it extensively. Show you what happened, kind of makes more sense so if I can show you the location. Before I head off to the crash site, I stop by the Oakdale Museum where I was told the pieces of the jet plane are in storage. This historic house was built in 1869. It just so happened that two folks visiting the museum that day were witnesses to the devastating crash and agreed to talk to me about it. I was outside playing and I heard the plane and the engine was sputtering. Wow. And. Uh, the next thing I know, because we lived out on um, the ranch on Mondo Ranch. Okay. Okay, and so the next thing, there was fire, and then I got to see myself, what had happened, and the people were killed. That was all farms out there. Of all the places it could have missed, but it hit their it house. It hit the house. Yeah. It, because as it was coming down, it, it, yeah. you, you could see it diving. Yeah. And I went in and I can remember telling my mom, there's a plane that just went down. Now you remember that day? Oh, sure. So how old were you, you think? Uh, I was a teenager, I was probably 13. Okay. And how did you first learn about it, did you? Well, because we lived on South Lee Avenue and it was on North Lee Avenue and it was like a big explosion. And I thought yeah. the Japanese had attacked or something. Yeah. So I ran down there and my dad was already there because he saw it crash. And your dad? And he was a highway patrol. Highway man. patrol officer. Yeah. Yeah. And he pulled Mr. Anderson? Yes, he did, but he was dead. You didn't see Mr. Anderson, huh? No, I didn't, no. Okay. No, and then the fire department come down there and run all those kids out because we were all grabbing, grabbing hoses and trying to put the fires out because they were all over. And now, the fire department came. In your recollection, was this crash where that church is today? At yeah, pretty Pont much. Pontiac. Yeah, and that's where the Lee. Anderson Ranch was. Yeah. Etched in your mind, I'm sure. Yeah. This Jeff, jet airplane crash oh, parts. Wow. I guess these are parts the the uh, Air Force did not pick up, right? <laughs> Apparently, obviously. <laughs> Can we take them out and look at them? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Typically, during a crash. The Air Force tries to get all the pieces, but oh, I imagine this stuff is everywhere. 
disintegrated. Look at that. Wow. Pieces of the airplane. Now this definitely looks like a piece of the airplane right here. Wow. Not sure what that is, but. Yeah, there's tons of metal here. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Some pilots would probably know what that is. God only knows. Wow. Obviously stuff like this for yeah. wiring. People. I think Look. I was expecting bigger parts though. No. Not just pieces of it. Right. I mean, this is, <clears throat> you didn't know this stuff was here, huh? I did not know it was here. And I've been volunteering here for 14 years. <laughs> This apparently is a piece of maybe of something flight, uh, dealing with flight that so survived the crash. So I'm very glad that I came by the museum because Don Reese here called the daughter of Mrs. Lankford, the one who lived in the second house that was hit by the jet plane, took out the carport, made a phone call to her. She knows I'm coming. She's 90 something years old and she's going to talk to me about what she experienced. So feel very lucky today. I found it incredible that Mary Grace Langford, who lived in the Pontiac Avenue house when the jet engine struck there in 1959, is still living there these 64 years later. She and husband Sam Langford are the ones in this newspaper photo with the jet engine crashed into their garage. Sam was the owner of the H&O Market in Oakdale, the one that our family used to buy groceries at. He passed away in 2008. I was told that she might take a while to get to the door. Kind of surreal to be here knowing that part of the jet hit this house right here, this carport. The back side of the house was taken out. Hello, Mrs. Langford. Hello. I can't see you. <laughs> I know you can't until I open this. <laughs> Hi. Right there. I couldn't How see are you, you either. Come on in. You're Jeff, right? Yes, I am. So tell me where, this was not here at the time, no, was it? No, this wasn't. We've added on a couple of times. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the, where the beam is going across, that was the end of the garage. This beam right here? The, this beam. Uh-huh. Was the end of the garage. Uh -huh. And uh, that wasn't there, that was just all open. Okay, the it was part of your back. Was part of that. Okay, so where did the plane hit? The plane hit about uh, where the uh, the engine. It was the engine that hit. Oh wow! Where the plane, where the pool table is, <laughs> right, there right in the front of the car, because we just drove in. My son and I. He was oh, an infant still. Uh huh. We had been grocery shopping. Put him in the crib. And I put uh, a potato in the oven for dinner, a couple of potatoes, and uh, sat down in the front room. It was August, so it was hot. Yeah. And uh, I opened the front door, sat down in the front room, which is in there, started reading the paper when I heard this boom. <laughs> and I thought it was a sonic boom. Everyone came running to me saying, grab the baby and run, uh -huh. which I did. And it was the end of the street before I knew that what had happened. Wow. You know, when you think back about all of the places that it could have hit, and it had to hit here. I know. I bet you were the talk of the town for a long time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Now you want a baby picture, that's him, that's him, this is him. This is the, this is the baby who you had to rescue out of the house, huh? Yeah. Now your house didn't catch on fire, did no. it? No. But lucky. they were afraid that it was going to, the engine was still on fire, and they were afraid it was going to catch the car on fire. That's well, why they wanted us to get out. Yeah. Oh, man, I bet the whole town came out for you. <laughs> they did, because Sammy was at the store and somebody had just he was taking groceries out to somebody's car 
somebody went by and yelled that a plane just crashed out by your house. Got the keys in the pickup and told him he was leaving. And he got as far as the church and he couldn't get any further because wow. of the cars and the people. Wow. <laughs> and we have a hydrant out here, a fire hydrant. Well, the, the fire trucks couldn't get to it because the people <laughs> were, there were so many people. Knowing what you know, and a man was killed, um, I guess you guys felt lucky, huh? Very. Yeah. Very fortunate, yeah. yeah. It took out the end of the house. Well, thanks for telling your story. Well, it isn't much of a story. <laughs> I, I was fascinated when I heard about it, yeah. So all that I had to go by was um, the Modesto Bee put this uh, drawing, an aerial drawing, detailing how the, the flight path of that plane that was just careening out of control. And the best that I can determine is it happened right over here. Right now, this is the Sierra Baptist Church property, but this is where the Anderson barn and ranch house was, where the jet plane initially crashed. I located an article in the Oakdale Leader explaining how Kyle Anderson purchased his ranch in December of 1926 at the west edge of Oakdale. He would have no way of knowing that this purchase would lead to his death 32 years later. Back in the 1950s, this was the edge of town, and it was approximately behind this building here where the plane took out a barn, took out cows. Now, of course, the ranch house isn't here anymore. It's been torn down. And then the pieces of the plane bounced off in this direction. Now, keep in mind, this school wasn't here at the time. I actually went to school there, <laughs> Fair Oak School. And, uh, of course, this building wasn't here either. But if you can imagine, this wayward plane was circling around, made a loop this way, came touching down, just careening out of control right through here, bouncing up and down. At 5.15 p.m., the F-100 Air Force jet struck the Anderson farmhouse, approximately where the white X is here. The plane also destroyed the poultry shed, killing about 50 chickens, their two-car garage, and destroyed three vehicles. Their barn would soon go up in smoke. Pieces of the plane broke up and were scattered about the block to the east and southeast while the engine shot straight toward the west garage of the Lankfords on Pontiac Street. Fortunately, there were no homes between the Lankfords and Lee Avenue. On his 25-minute parachute descent safely to the foothill area of Rock River Road in Tuolumne County, about four miles from the Rushing Mountain Fire Lookout, Swanson reported seeing the fireball explosion in Oakdale. He wandered four miles to the Wallace Little Farmhouse, where he called his Air Force superiors. Meanwhile, in Oakdale, the crashed jet created pandemonium on the Anderson farm. A distraught Esther Anderson tended to her husband, taken out by the landing gear and lying dead on the floor. Their daughter, Leona Anderson, was knocked back and sustained an injury to her elbow and cuts to her head from the flying debris. But her children, David and Carol, were all right. Curiosity seekers who flooded the area clogged the streets and prevented firefighter access, but attempted to use garden hoses to put out about nine grass fires caused by the spill fuel. The local National Guard unit moved in to hold back crowds from picking up souvenir parts of the plane. So I'm going to walk down here. <laughs> My mother, we were registering. We were being registered for school. And it was hot in the summertime. And my mom cut her foot on some aluminum can in that parking lot. And she bled like crazy blood. And I got sick to my stomach. And I actually had to go in the office and put my head down because I felt like I was going to pass out. Here it is. We moved to Oakdale in 1971. And this was the first school that I went to. <laughs> and it was a disastrous year. I had a teacher, her name was Nell Spencer. And she lost total control of that class. I don't think I learned anything that year. She just let the kids run right over the top of her. And by the end of the year, even the best student, Kim Coffey, she was acting up too. I was the only kid in that class who didn't give Mrs. Spencer crap. I felt sorry for her. She, God, she looked like she was probably 70 years old. And uh, she would just get so frazzled and just almost to the point of tears. Worst grade of my life, fourth grade. I think Mrs. Spencer retired after that. This is the FES hall. And uh, this was not here at the time. 
at the time of the crash, the Andersons were here. This was a ranch. Most of us don't live in fear over the potential of planes to hit our homes, but what happened in Oakdale is a reminder that it can and does happen. Stanislaus County, where I live, is beneath a major air corridor between the East Coast and the Bay Area. But they often slip by undetected unless I look up and see the vapor trails. The odds, however, thank God, are on our side even though there are about 45,000 average daily airline flights over the United States. Despite a rash of airliner mishaps, let's hope the FAA gets into gear and keeps things safe as they have been. So from the site of the 1959 Oakdale jet crash, I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video. I hope you found it interesting. I know when I heard about it for the first time in my life that I had to do a story about it. If you uh, can leave us a comment, I'd appreciate your thoughts. If anything like this ever happened in your neck of the woods, I know I have people from all over the country and all over the world. Really, the incident of jets crashing into houses pretty rare. Thank God. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of History Hunters.